The UN finally recognizes sexual violence Israeli women experienced on October 7th. Elsewhere, the incriminating recordings of two UNRWA teachers who took part in the October 7th attack were exposed. But how is the Hamas leadership still talking to the world after the IDF crushed the Hamas headquarters? I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 151st day of the war against Hamas. I will start with some somber, but nonetheless good news. Details of a recent UN report were revealed on Monday confirming a lot of evidence of sexual violence during the surprise attack by Hamas terrorists on October 7, 2023. This compelled UN Undersecretary General Permila Patten to announce With regard to the hostages taken to Gaza, we found clear and convincing information that sexual violence, including rape, sexualized torture, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment, has been committed against captives. And we also have reasonable grounds to believe that such violence may still be ongoing against those still held in captivity. To be very honest with you, this is one of the most difficult topics I can talk about. It really brings tears to my eyes just to think about what those heartless terrorists did to these women and even young girls and what they continue to do to them. But it's good that the UN is finally admitting it and I hope it puts an end to upsetting claims that Israel is overreaching to the October 7th attacks. That's why I'm once again asking you to help us spread the truth by sharing our videos and following us on YouTube. A question that has been bothering me recently is how the Hamas leadership in Gaza communicates with the world almost five months after fighting began and so much of the terrorist infrastructure in Gaza has been destroyed. Let's take a look at how Hamas leaders in the Gaza Strip continue to take precautions to protect themselves from Israeli intelligence, keeping in mind the difficulties they're facing after five months of war. Despite the reports of a complete disconnection between the leaders of Hamas in Gaza, Yechia Sinwar, and the head of the political bureau, Ismail Aniya, the leadership in Gaza discusses every offer or deal and decides on their fate. The constant discussions are conducted in secret. In order to prevent the information from leaking out, sources close to the leadership of Hamas told the newspaper El Sharak El Ausat, which is an Arabic language newspaper that is published in London, that the leaders of the movement adopted a special mechanism to establish contact mainly with parties outside the Gaza Strip. This was necessary because of the almost constant interruptions of internet service in Gaza, as well as to evade the surveillance of Israeli intelligence. According to the report, the system is based on Russian and North Korean technology, which allows for encrypted phone communication. The IDF is familiar with the system and already in 2018 tried to destroy buildings that housed the central connecting points for this system. However, Hamas has managed to maintain this communications network, having built most of the physical infrastructure for it underneath the ground in its terror tunnels. Over the course of five months of combat, the IDF has managed to destroy some of this physical infrastructure along with the tunnels which contain the communication lines. However, the Hamas sources told El Sharak El Ausat that despite this damage, the system is still functioning. They were even used by Hamas leadership to conduct the negotiations that led to the first ceasefire deal and the release of the Israeli hostages. Later, El Qassam engineers managed to restore part of the switchboard to work and activated new communication points, mainly in Rafah, which is the last city that Hamas terrorists 
has been able to keep physical control of. Another story to come out of the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours involves two teachers employed by the notorious UN Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA. I don't know what your high school teacher did in his spare time, but it turns out that UNRWA teachers working in the terror state of Hamas in Gaza weren't playing golf in the afternoons. For the first time, two tapes have been revealed that incriminate two men employed as teachers of UNRWA schools in the Gaza Strip as they talk with their friends about their participation in the Hamas attack on October 7, 2023. In the first recording, a terrorist who worked as an Arabic teacher at the UNRWA school in Deir el-Balakh describes his entry into Israeli territory and states that he has Israeli hostages in his hands. In the second recording, another terrorist who works as a teacher at the UNRWA elementary school in Khan Yunus describes that he is inside Israeli territory. These recordings give even more weight to the already extensive evidence that Israel has presented to prove that Hamas made use of civilian institutions, including schools, hospitals, and international aid organizations for terrorist purposes and the harming of innocents. According to intelligence indications, more than 450 Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists in the Gaza Strip are also employed by UNRWA in various capacities. I can also share some good news with you, that the IDF has successfully completed Operation Crown of the West. This was an intensive IDF operation that resulted in a large number of terrorists being taken off the battlefield. The IDF troops arrived quietly during the night and surrounded the Hamen neighborhood in the west of Khan Yunis. There are many terrorist infrastructures in the neighborhood, and according to the intelligence assessments, most of the surviving terrorists in the city had gathered there. The combat teams of the Givati Battalion and the 7th Armored Brigade surrounded the neighborhood and the commandos moved in on the Hamas positions in the neighborhood on foot. These remaining Hamas stronghold positions included weapons warehouses, hiding apartments, and infrastructures used by senior Hamas officials. When all the ground forces were in position, aircraft commenced an attack on Hamas terror locations that was coordinated with the ground forces. The Hamas terrorists were taken by surprise and the IDF was able to quickly achieve its objectives. This included the establishment of a humanitarian evacuation corridor in the area through which it is possible for citizens to go to shelters. So far, dozens of terrorists who tried to escape through this corridor have been discovered and arrested. They were then interrogated by the IDF field intelligence units and provided important information for the continuation of the fighting. Please continue to spread the truth with us share and follow us on YouTube, and most importantly, pray together with us for the peace of the kidnapped Israelis, the peace of the soldiers, and the peace of Jerusalem. Together we will win this war. Thank you.